Welcome back to Billy Bat. Today we're looking at part two of our ending discussion. Today we're looking at the characters from an insider perspective, looking at how they understand the world and their own personal journeys. Last time we looked at how their actions explored some key themes, as well as the idea of whether or not our characters were being manipulated into action the whole time. Today, we're looking at their own motivations, ignoring all that book book theme look and how they ended up where they did. We're going to break this down by characters. We're going to start looking at Kevin and then move on to Timmy. And then finally, we're going to do a little bit on Chuck and Kevin Yamagata's final farewell. It's something that we missed out in our story process, which I want to add in here. What this means is I can finally talk about Timmy in some detail. So spoilers, obviously, if you haven't read Billy Bat, here is a few too many videos to look at before this one. I really love this story and I've been talking about it for a hot minute. So righto, let's crack in. Kevin starts the final arc in a rough place. This is fresh off the heels of losing Billy to Timmy, losing to Vivi, losing his passion to draw and failing to help anyone on September 11. Golden Age was not kind to Kevin. His goal through Heart Teacher is to find Kevin Yamagata and his purpose once again. So that's exactly what he does. The Kevins haven't seen each other since the start of Komori Village. This is their first real-time meeting since Kevin Goodman is actually old enough to appreciate it. Goodman had always been a Yamagata fan, and Yamagata is potentially the only person to understand the burden that the Bat's prophecies are. Back in the Lee Harvey Oswald arc, we see Yamagata drinking himself into oblivion, trying to avoid the visions. For Goodman, he got pieces of the 9-11 story and failed to save anyone, despite his best efforts. I don't want to dwell too long on the Golden Age fallout, but I think understanding this will bring a lot of context to Kevin's story. Kevin Goodman had not failed until the end of Golden Age. He had not failed once. In the story, we see that he's passing school because the Bat tells him what to do. He gets immediately accepted as the new Billy Bat author. He stops Karusu from ending the world. He succeeds in reviving Billy Bat and bringing it into a Golden Age. Time after time, we see Kevin struggle and succeed, and we know he's a good person just trying to do the right thing. He's a good man. This all builds such a high pedestal for Kevin to fall from, from always succeeding in everything he does to losing everything in a single day. This is why Kevin so strongly feels the weight of September 11th. He feels responsible for every single person he did not get to save. Back to the Kevin's meeting, this is the first time Goodman really meets someone who knows this feeling, of knowing something is going to happen and being unable to stop it. And this is such a short encounter. The Kevins don't even get a whole day together. What's important for Goodman is the recognition from Yamagata. The torch is truly passed to Goodman, and he's told that once his stories are perfected, then his Billy will be perfected. In a sense, that's what the whole journey to find Yamagata has been about. On the way, Kevin has seen the world. He's seen the hurt and the pain. So when Yamagata says to develop his stories, he's actually got already everything that he needs. The final thing Yamagata tells him is to go and find Billy in the Basque cave. This is something that Kevin needs to do. He's been drawing about this since he was a child, and Billy has been such an integral part of his life the whole time. At this point, Kevin's been without Billy for years. This is his chance to get closure on Billy, and his final chance to get answers. When he finally encounters the bats, he asks what he should do next. Finding Billy was kind of Kevin's final quest, and to a degree, Kevin is still looking for a way to set things right. Remember that Kevin is still caught under the failure in Golden Age. It's during this conversation that it all comes together for Kevin. He wants to share his feelings, his heart of justice through his comics. Billy tells him what Kevin Yamagata did, to keep on drawing. And it's this epiphany in the cave with Billy that ends up being the message of the Pharaoh's curse, the story that will one day go on to hopefully save the world. Kevin absolutely followed through on that discussion. We see him surrounded by his comics when Timmy comes to see him, and we see the longevity of the stories with the soldiers. Kevin managed to put together the culmination of his experience into the Pharaoh's curse. Even at the end, he doesn't have any ill will towards Timmy. Kevin is forgiving and learned to be tolerant, simply asking Timmy why he doesn't draw anymore. And this is the last we see of Kevin, contently working away at his Billy Bat comics. 
Before we move on to Timmy, I think failure is central to understanding Kevin's story. You could say that overall, he is a failure. He lost Billy Bat and the Golden Cola water to Timmy, who ended up burning the world down with them. Kevin had some great advantages in his life. He was the heir to a fortune, he had Billy Bat with him his whole life, and he really should have been able to do some amazing things in this world. However, on the flip side, you could say that he is a success. He's established a story that could pull humanity back from the brink of destruction. He's been able to tie these wholesome heart of justice stories to the global phenomenon of Billy Bat. I personally sympathise a lot with Kevin. He tried his best and made some bad calls which cost him dearly. In the end, he does what he can and what he feels like he was born to do. And perhaps that's all that he needed to do. Timmy Sonata is the second character to look at today. Mainly, we need to look at Timmy's dream. He is defined by the goal that he has. He wants to create safe havens for Billy Bat fans the world over because he believes the world is going in a bad direction. This is central to every single decision that Timmy makes. In Heart Teacher, Timmy manages to expand Colkin Enterprises into the world's largest company, pushing into electricity and water. The goal is to have Colkin have all the resources necessary to supply these safe havens. So, Timmy's actions follow these two broad ideas of 1. Having Billy enough of a media presence to bring in fans, and 2. Having the resources to provide refuge for the future. Timmy got corrupted right at the start when he was still really young by TV Chuck into planning to take over Billy Bat. And I want to bring this up purely because we often look at how or if Billy Bat manipulates people into action. For Timmy, he never met the Bat but TV Chuck and their version of Billy manipulated Timmy into action as a child. So let's ask the question, is Timmy a bad guy? The story definitely paints him as a villain, but good villains never think that they're villains. Let's look at it from Timmy's perspective. He thinks the world is going to be heading in a bad direction. By the end of Golden Age, he believes himself a prophet like Kevin Goodman and gains assurance that the world is in danger. Timmy believes that using Colkin Enterprises, he can protect people from this future. What's interesting to note is that Timmy doesn't feel like he can stop the world's decline. He can only do what he can to stop humanity from ending entirely. Now let's explain why Timmy is kind of nuts. It all boils down to the crazy Colkins. So as mentioned earlier, he's been manipulated by his own father early on. He then gets the idea from Audrey that he's a prophet. He ends up completely believing this after September 11. So there's this ingrained superiority to Timmy that he knows what's best because he has seen the future. We lump on top of this what I call the Curse of Colkin. Every person we see leading Colkin Enterprises, TV Chuck, Audrey, Timmy, all turn into really heartless people while they're leading the company. They end up doing some pretty dastardly things in order to keep Colkin as a dominant company. It's not just the people because when Audrey is kicked out, she seals down significantly and actually opens up her heart a bit. So Timmy is also dealing with this effect of managing the world's biggest company. So is Timmy a bad guy? He's definitely an ends justifies the means type of guy. He allows mining that poisons drinking water, he authorises murders of other Billy Bat authors, he orders Monica dead when she challenges his Grandmaster plan, hold on to that last one because we'll come back to it shortly. I don't think that Timmy thinks himself a bad guy. He just believes the future he envisions is unavoidable, and believes himself the only hope for humanity. If he didn't take these tough steps now, then Colkin would not be in the position to support humanity through the future, and humanity would end. Like so much of Billy Bat, how you interpret this is up to you. Maybe humanity really would have been doomed without the work Timmy accomplished. Maybe this future was entirely avoidable and Timmy's just knuckin' futz. Regardless, Timmy believed it to be true, which is why he takes the actions that he does. So where does Monica come in? She challenges him that he's actually part of the problem and not really the solution. But no one does that, you can't go against Colkin Enterprises, you'll be killed. Monica is probably the only person to stand up to Timmy since he took control of the company. What's worse is that she tells him that his Billy is a fake and that he could never see the real Billy. This is a big vulnerability of Timmy's, that he could never see the Bat. 
We never know exactly why he takes this so hard. It might be that he sees Billy as a way to change the future. Billy can't be real, otherwise everything Timmy is working towards could be for nothing. It might be that he doesn't want some other force out there stronger than Colkin working against him. It might be that he doesn't want to admit that there are real Billy Bat authors out there and he's just not one of them. Whatever the reason, we see Timmy is still vulnerable about Billy, even right at the end. Regardless, Timmy achieved his goal. He retook Billy Bat and grew Colkin into a safe haven for Billy fans the world over. He was right that the world was turning to garbage and everything kind of went all according to his plan. But he's not happy. When he goes to shut down Kevin, Timmy brags about how all his dreams are coming true. Kevin challenges him to draw Billy again, remembering back to the fun they had drawing Billy when they were younger. Timmy draws and does so perfectly. When asked why he doesn't draw anymore, Timmy can only tear up and leave. Timmy didn't think he could draw anymore and gave up trying a long time ago. Now he's hearing that he's as good as ever from his old mentor and the man he stole everything from. We've talked a bit about whether or not Timmy had a genuine Billy in the themes video, but I think that Timmy was drawing his Billy again here. Just two blokes remembering the good times drawing their Billies together and doing so once again. Timmy realises that he could have kept Billy going this whole time, but he sold out his own work and went back to TV Chuck's version just to push his agenda and to get his goals. Timmy's a character I don't think we're supposed to sympathise with, but his story is actually quite tragic. He lost the plot and gave in to this belief that the future was set. He threw everything he could into building Culkin up to be a safe haven for humanity. He did some pretty awful things to others. He authorised murders and ruthless takeovers. He threw away his own Billy Bat to try and manipulate the world into accepting TV Chuck's version. He did it all on the belief that he needed to do it in order to save humanity. And at the end of it all, everything went as he expected, but he's not happy. And that's the last we see of Timmy. Kevin and Chuck have this really nice send-off, which we didn't find space for to include in the story videos, so I wanted to include it somewhere, and here is kind of where it fell. Chuck has been feeling guilty for taking Billy Bat from Kevin his whole life. The last time they saw each other was before Kevin left for Japan, when they were both very young men. This was literally the first chapter of the story. Now they're both very old, they've lived their lives, they've experienced vastly different things. Chuck has gone on to grow Billy Bat with TV Chuck before handing it back to Kevin Goodman, then in assisting Kevin Goodman and handing over the comic to Timmy. Kevin Yamagata, meanwhile, has been chasing the Momochi scroll before being shot, then walking the earth hiding from groups who still want to kill him over the scroll or the JFK assassination. We catch up with Chuck on his deathbed. This is after the Kevins have parted ways after the Tibet cave. Chuck is hanging on to life just to say sorry to Kevin for stealing Billy. Chuck knew from the start how much authenticity matters to Kevin and how much of a betrayal this whole thing would have been to him. Audrey and Monica manage to set up a video conference with Kevin. Chuck finally gets to say that he's sorry. Kevin immediately forgives Chuck. He tells Chuck that he still needs his assistance to take up his pen and to draw. The two draw together just like the old times. And this is the last time we see the both of them. That's going to be it for this video. We're going to be putting Billy Bat to bed now. I think I've talked about it enough at this point. If you joined us for the whole Billy Bat journey, I hope you've enjoyed it and found an appreciation for the story that I absolutely love. If you've got any more Billy thoughts or questions, please drop them in a comment. I'm always keen to talk Billy and hear other people's interpretations. If you haven't read it yourself yet, you need to go and have a read. You will not be disappointed. So that's the end of the video and Billy Bat for now. Thanks for watching. This has been CG, and I'll see you G's in the next one.